Hello everybody, this is Sanjay. Today I am going to teach you the chapter 1 from standard 7 from Honeydew book. First chapter is the best Christmas present in the world. So, let us start. This is part 1. I spotted it in a junk shop in Bridport, a roll top desk. Spotted it, spotted it means saw it or found it. The man said it was early 19th century and oak. I had wanted one, but they were far too expensive. This one was in a bad condition. The roll top in several pieces, one leg crumbly mended, scotch marks all down one side. Scotch marks means bone marks. It was going for very little money. I thought I could restore it. It would be a risk, a challenge, but I had to have it. I paid the man and brought it back to my workroom at the back of the garage. I began work on it on Christmas Eve. Restore means repair. I removed the roll top completely and pulled out the drawers, the veneer had lifted almost everywhere. When it means a thin layer of plastic or decorative wood on furniture of cheap wood. It looked like water damage to me, but the fire and water had clearly taken their role on this desk. Taken their toll on means damaged. The last drawer was stock first. I tried all I could to ease it out gently. In the end, I used brute force. I stuck it sharply with the side of my fist and drawer flew open to reveal a swallow space underneath. A secret door. There was something in there. I reached in and look out a small black tin box, cellar tapped to the top of it was a piece of lined not paper and written on it in sacky handwriting. Jim's last letter received January 25, 1915 to be buried with me when the time comes I knew as I did it that it was wrong of me to open the box but curiosity got the better of my scruples. It means feelings that make you hesitate to do something wrong. It usually does. Inside the box, there was an envelope. The address read Mrs. Jim McPherson, 12 Copper Beaches, Bridport, Dorset. I took out the letter and unfolded it. It was written in pencil and dated at the top, December 26, 1914. Now part 2. Dearest Connie, I write to you in a much happier frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened that I must tell you about at once. We were all standing too in our trenches. Trenches means long deep ditches in the ground where soldiers hide from the enemy. Yesterday morning, Christmas morning, it was crisp and quiet all about as beautiful a morning as I have ever seen, as called as frosty, as a Christmas morning should be. I should like to be able to tell you that we begin it, but the truth I am assumed to say is that Fridge began it. First someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite. Then they were calling out to us from across no man's land. Happy Christmas, Tommy. Happy Christmas. When we had got over the surprise, some of us shouted back. Same to you, Fridge. Fridge means a name for a German soldier. Same to you. I thought that it would be that. We all did, but then suddenly one of them was up there in his grey great coat and waving a white flag. Don't shoot, lads. 
sometime sorry someone shouted and no one did then there was another fridge up on the parapet and another keep your heads down i told that man it's a trick but it was not one of the germans was waving a bottle above his head it was it is christmas day tommy we have scams it means a german drink made from grain we have sauces we meet you yes by this time there were dozens of them walking towards us across no man's land and not a ripple between them little private morris was the first up common boys what are we waiting for and then there was no stopping them i was the officer i should have stopped them there and then i suppose but the truth is that it never even occurred to me i should all along their line and ours i could see men walking slowly towards one another gray coats khaki coats meeting in the middle and i was one of them i was part of this in the middle of war we were making peace you cannot imagine dreadest conny my feelings as i looked into the eyes of the fridge officer who approached me had outstretched hans wolf he said gripping my hand warmly and holding it i am from dussel dorf i play the cello in the orchestra happy christmas cello means a musical instrument like a large violin captain jim macpherson i replied and a happy christmas to you too i am a school teacher from dorset in the west of england oh dorset he smiled I know this place I know it very well we shared my rum ration and his excellent sauces and we talked conny how we talked he spoke almost perfect english but it turned out that he had never set foot in dorset never even been to england he had learned all the new all he knew of england from school and from reading books in english His favorite writer was Thomas Hardy. His favorite book for far from the madding crowd. So out there in no man's land we talked of Bathsheba and Gabriel Oak and Sergeant Troy and Dorset. He had a wife and one son born just 6 months ago. As I looked about me there was hurdles of khaki and grey everywhere all over no man's land smoking laughing talking drinking eating hans wolf and i said what was left of your wonderful christmas cake conny he thought the mazi pan was best he had ever tasted mazi pan means a sweet covering on a cake made from sugar eggs and almonds i agreed we agreed about everything and he was my enemy there there never was a christmas party like it conny then someone i don't know who brought out a football great cards were dumped in piles to make goal post and next thing we knew it was tommy against fridge out in the middle of one's land hans wolf and i looked on and cheered clapping our hands and slumping our feet to keep out the cold as well as anything as much as anything there was moment when i noticed our breath mingling in the air between us he saw it too and smiled jim macpherson he said after a while i think this is how we should resolve this war a football match no one dies in a football match no children are orphaned no wives become widows i would prefer cricket i told him then we tommies could be sure of winning probably we laughed at that and together we was the game said to say conny fridge won two goals to one but as hans wolf generously said our goal was wider than theirs so it wasn't quite fair the time came and all too soon when the game was finished the scraps and rum and sauces 
had long since run out and we knew it was all over. I wished Hans well and told him I hoped he would see his family again soon, that fighting would end and we could all go home. I think that is what every soldier wants on both sides, Hans Wolf said. Take care, Jim McPherson. I shall never forget this moment, nor you. He saluted and walked away from me slowly. Unwingly, I felt he turned to wave just once and then reds of grey coated men drifting back towards their trenches. That night, back in our dugouts, we heard them singing a carol and singing it quite beautifully. It was still natch, silent night. Our boys gave them a rousing chorus of wild shepherds watched. We exchanged carols for a while and then we all fell silent. We had had our time of peace and goodwill, a time I will treasure as long as I live. Dearest Connie, by Christmas time next year, this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible memory. I know from all that happened today how much both armies long for peace. We shall be together again soon. I am sure of it. Your loving Jim. Now part 3. I folded the letter again and slipped it carefully back into its envelope. I kept awake all night by morning. I knew what I had to do. I drove into Bridport. Just a few miles away, I asked a po boy walking his dog where Copper Beaches was. House number 12 turned out to be nothing but a burned out cell. The roof gaping, the windows boarded off. I knocked at the house next door and asked if anyone knew the whereabouts of a Mrs. McPherson. Oh, yes, said the old man in his slippers. He knew her well. A lovely old lady, he told me, a bit muddle headed. But at her age, she was entitled to be, wasn't she? Muddle headed means confused. A hundred and one years old, she had been in the house when it caught fire. No one really knew how the fire had started, but it could well have been candles. She used candles rather than electricity. Because she always thought electricity was too expensive, the fireman had got her out just in time. She was in a nursing home now. He told me, Burlington House on the Dorchester Road on the other side of town. I found Burlington House nursing home easily enough. There were paper chains up in the halfway and a lighted Christmas tree stood in the corner with a lopsided angel on the top. I said I was a friend come to visit Mrs. McPherson to bring her a Christmas present. I could see throw into the dining room where everyone was wearing a paper hat and singing. The matron had a hat on too and seemed happy enough to see me. She when offered me a mince pie, she walked me along along the corridor mrs macpherson is not in is not in with uh, others she told me she would rather confuse today so we thought it the best if she had a good rest she has no family you know no one visits so i am sure she will be only too pleased to see you she took me into the converse conservatory with wicker chairs and potted plants all around and left me the old lady was sitting in the wheelchair, her hands folded in her lap. She had silver white hair pinned into a wispy bun. She was gazing out at the garden. Hello, I said. She turned and looked up at the vacantly at me vacantly. Happy Christmas, Connie. I went on. I found this. I think it's yours. As I was speaking, her eyes never left my face. I opened the tin box and gave it to her. That was the moment our, her eyes lit up with recognition and her face became suffused 
with a sudden glow of happiness. I explained about the, his desk, about how I had found it, but I don't think she was listening for a while. She had nothing but struck the letter tenderly with her fingertips. Suddenly, she reached out and took my hand. Her eyes were filled with tears. You told me you would come home by Christmas, dearest, she said. And here you are, the best Christmas present in the world. Come closer, Jim, dear, sit down. I sat down beside her and uh, she kissed my cheek. I read your letter so often, Jim. Every day I wanted to hear your voice in my head. It always made me feel you were with me. And now you are. Now you are back. You can read it to me my, yourself. Would you do that for me, Jim, dear? I just want to hear your voice again. I would love that so much. And then perhaps we will have some tea. I have made you in. Uh, I have made you a nice Christmas cake, Majipan. All around, I know how much you love Majipan. Thank you very much. It is very very long chapter. So sorry for if you feel bored. It is written by Michael. Marpur go. So, thank you for watching this video again and uh, wait for more videos. Subs don't forget to subscribe and like.